we can put on our huge smiles this time. Hi, this is Tom Stewart with uh, Cleaning Business Today, and I've got my uh, partner here, Liz. Hi, y'all. Uh, we're um, for another uh, part of our ongoing series for uh, coronavirus smart business moves uh, for our, for house cleaning companies. Uh, it's Friday, made it to the end of the week. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I got I got to say that I'm feeling a little different about Fridays and the weekend now than maybe what I did uh, a couple of months ago. Um, Weekends have a scary aspect to them because there's just a whole lot of things that happen over the weekend. A lot of things change over the weekend and the way things look Friday, a lot of times they look very much different on Monday. So um, here we go again. Let's, uh, let's all hope for the best. You know, there's some things out there where there's some potential of some therapeutic drugs that might, uh, you know, drugs are around the market. That, that, that might be what they would call a therapeutic that would take somebody with the virus, make them uh, feel better to the point where uh, the mortality rate would drop a bunch and that would be a huge game changer. But, uh, you know, that's probably a number of uh, weeks out. And I don't know, we just need to keep our fingers crossed on something on some of those things. Um, today, we wanted to um, talk about uh, some of the things that we should be doing on the financial side. Isn't that right, Liz? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, we wanted to talk about things that we should be looking at now to, I guess, pair our businesses for the potential of, of an economic downturn. And that economic downturn is going to, you know, be caused by, by a couple of things. I guess the most immediate concern is the spread of the coronavirus and the, the, the fears that are, that are being created by that, that there are going to be a lot of consumers that aren't going to want you in the home. And, um, you know, you might not want to go in their homes, just depending upon, you know, where, what their uh, exposures and risks are. And secondly, there's a real economic component to this. Uh, the economy is uh, really cratering at the moment in terms of where the stock market is going and financial institutions and the number of, you know, everything from, you know, across the board, people are going to be looking for money, including small businesses. So, um, I want to start the discussion, uh, just kind of full disclosure and to, to kind of explain where, where we've been at Castle Keepers here for the last, uh, well, maybe we've been having this discussion for, for a while, but, uh, you know, all the partners uh, got together today, uh, Liz, myself, uh, Derek and Troy, and looking at the horizon of where we are now and what we anticipate you know could be happening would be happening in the weeks ahead made the decision to uh temporarily halt all non-essential cleaning services across all the branches and castle keepers uh we announced that that we're doing it for two weeks uh starting this afternoon or this evening through I don't know, April 2nd, April 3rd, whatever two Fridays from, from, from now is. Um, and, you know, there's some possibility that some things could change and shift where we might actually recast and, and, and start doing some work after that period for, for residential clients. But we're preparing for the possibility that it could go on longer, maybe, maybe a number of months longer before that would, um, that would um, that would change. Um, we're going to continue to do work what we call essential services. We do some work for uh, some multifamily housing, property management groups where we're cleaning, you know, elevators and staircases and things that you know space that people live in that they need the help. We do some work uh, for some uh, from senior senior communities and they um, they need our ongoing help for, for for a number of reasons. So we're going to continue to do. Do, do do some of that work, but but for the most part, we're uh, we're we're shutting down here for for at least the next two weeks and, and maybe longer. Um, it was uh, interesting times. We had a we had a long discussion today, didn't we, Les? It was not one of our quicker ones. It was not. No. It was also not our longest one. <laughs> no, we're we're, we're, longer. we're capable of talking a long time. Yes, yes, we are. Anything, any, any points I missed there, Liz, that would be um, useful for, for us to share? 
Um, I don't think so. Uh, the only thing that maybe I would clarify is you said we're closing down all essential, non-essential services. And currently that is not a um, well understood phrase. It is the definition there is very fluid. It depends on who you talk to and who you talk to on what day, right? So California's idea of essential services is different than Wyoming's uh, definition of essential services. And uh, currently there are a lot of places that are not even attempting to define essential services, right? Uh, and, and the cleaning companies don't even fall on some of these lists essential or non-essential, residential, commercial, they're not even on the list. So that would be the only thing I would say is you were specifically talking about residential services right. Um, right. and not multifamily residential either, just just residential. Yeah, you're right. It's sad in some way that we're having to make up our own definition for for what that is we, we need we need more guidance i guess from uh from government on on that but it was our judgment that you know if it's space that people live in that they don't have the option to isolate themselves it's communal space you know if i live in a building and i got to get in an elevator along with everybody else that lives in that building then the the we have an obligation to, to to clean that, and the you know that that would that was essential service. If it was cleaning Mrs. Jones's single family dwelling where she's you know should is supposed to be you know sequestered and and not going you know not leaving the home anyway, then it was our judgment that um, that would probably be best if we didn't uh, didn't enter that space at the moment. Now, you know, part of this whole, you know, thing for two weeks, you know, that's what we're saying. But if the government comes out next week and says something different, has different data, I mean, we don't know. But we're, we're, we're trying to do what we think that, that we need to be doing. And to be clear, what we're doing doesn't mean that this is what everybody else should be doing either. Different communities are doing different things. And, you got, I mean, there's there, there are a lot of moving parts of this. So no form or fashion do I want anybody to... Um, take away from this that, that you guys need to be doing what we decided to do in Castle Keepers. I mean, I guess, for, for example, Liz, you guys are dealing with something a little bit different in Olympia, and you're, you're, you're still moving ahead, right? Yep, we're still moving ahead in Olympia. Um, uh, and also, to be clear, you're not necessarily doing the same thing at each branch so of our different Castle Keepers branches, right? So. Currently, all the, the branches are closing down residential services for maybe two weeks, but moving forward on that, we're not exactly sure where we're going. Um, we, we also are doing some other stuff in Portland that are, is also being shut down on um, not residential, our um, Airbnbs. We are not, we're not cleaning. And our, um, what was the other one? Our Hello Alfreds, which are, um, um, multi-family living mm -hmm. and, and we have also decided to shut those down in Portland so is, is that more of a concern for risk of, of your cleaning professionals um, I think that no I, I don't think so um, I think that it's more because and, and you heard that I said um, Portland right Tom hmm I think you heard Olympia, but I Olympia, said I did. Okay, you were saying yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I'm I'm going to clarify. In Portland, we're also doing that because it's a much smaller branch, and the amount of work that we have that is multifamily like that is so small that it doesn't make sense to stay open for this very small amount of work. We would have enough work multifamily for one person on Thursdays, say, for example. So... Each branch is different. In Portland, we're shutting down all of our services, including multifamily. Yeah. So, we had a we had a discussion here in, in Charleston this afternoon about Airbnbs, and we do a lot of vacation rentals too, which I guess are basically the same thing. And mm -hmm. we're stopping all those services as as well. Um, 
a lot of that work is kind of dried up anyway. There's a ton of cancellations. But, but the concern was for the safety of our people because you got people flying in from all over the place, from like, you know, New York and places where the, the incidence of, of uh, illness is, is higher, much higher it is in this market. And just not knowing where those people are coming from, it just was, didn't feel like that was a risk that was, 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 was worth taking either. Um, I want to talk about, you know, the, I mean, we can, we can, anybody has any questions about any of this, you know, feel free to hit us up in chat. We'll be glad to talk about that. But we wanted to talk a little bit about some of the financial moves that, that, that you might want to be considering. And, and, and probably better if you just go ahead and comment, don't hit us up in chat. That way everybody will be able to see the comments and we can respond to everybody. Okay. It'll be easier for us. I um, think so. <laughs> when I say chat, I don't even know what that is. Is that down here where it says post a comment? Is that different than chat? Post a comment? So there's no, we want them to post a comment. There's two options. They can do a private chat or post a comment. And we would prefer they post comments. There you go. I just posted a comment. Good job. Hey, me. Um, cash. You know, the, you know, we've all probably heard the, the, the saying cash is king and in times like this more than than, than anything. And um, a lot of things are, are, are happening out there that uh, you know are, are going to be affecting cash. Some good, some bad. You know, we got customers that are canceling because they're afraid of, of the risk associated with the virus or and the other side of the equation, I mean, a lot of uh, companies that are struggling because their employees don't want to work because they're afraid of getting exposed to the coronavirus. So you're kind of getting it on both ends, but all of that's a, a diminution of income. So that's obviously going to hurt your cash. And on the flip side, there's some, some, some good opportunities out there because a lot of that cash you use goes to cover overhead and, and other expenses. And most of the people that you're used to uh, stroking a check to on a monthly basis are now open to having a discussion about changing those terms, making it easier for you to pay or deferring payments. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, we had some cars that we owned that were financed they were financed through Ally actually. And they have a program now that if you ask them, they'll let you defer all car payments for four months. So we said, heck yeah, sign us up for that. Um, you're, they're expecting eventually you're going to pay it, but they're giving you a four month holiday from, from having to pay. Now, I suspect there's going to be some interest accruing, but in the whole scheme of things, um, you know, if you find that, 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 that you can start paying it off before four months because things are going in a positive direction, you can, but you know, you might meet, need that money down the road for other things. Um, Bank of America announced this morning that for consumers, for residential mortgages, I think it's a three month holiday that they're offering everybody. You just got to ask for it. And, um, uh, you know, I, 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 again, I assume that interest would be accruing, but uh, I don't recall a time in my lifetime where banks and lending institutions were behaving that way. Um, this is different. You know, I, you, when you say Liz. Oh, I absolutely. I, I, I've never seen this in all the years I, I've been doing it. I, I'm kind of in shock. Every time I turn around, somebody's saying that they got this payment deferred, this payment deferred. And I'm like, what? You got what payment deferred? I mean, the president was on today saying our taxes aren't due until July 15th. What? <laughs> When has that ever happened, right? Really? So, I mean, I, I we, we've been saying this the whole time, right? This has been going on a, a week and a half now. We've been saying this is, what's the word you've been using, Tom? Unprecedented. Yes, this is unprecedented. And I think this is just more of that. It's more proof that this is an unprecedented uh, time in history. And we get to live through it. So, so, hey, Caddy. Hey, hi, Caddy. How about Katie? 
Uh, I'm reading what she said. I thought I'd go bankrupt, but thank God the financial institutions are working with us. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think that bankruptcy was looming large for a lot of small businesses. They were really in fear and a lot of people are having hope again. So super awesome, I think. Um, this, if you have any credit lines out there, um, you might want to go ahead and pull cash out of them. And that might look like a um, home equity line of credit. If you got that with money in it, I would go ahead and, and pull that money out and just put it somewhere. Uh, I wouldn't put it in the stock market. <laughs> I'd put it in some type of, you know, fixed income. And I wouldn't even be looking for interest because uh, you're looking at, you know, something that's so low, it's just, you know, for all practical purposes, just put it in a, in a, in a checkbook savings account type deal. Um, but you might need that later. And once you do that, go back around to the bank and say, you know, if I'm not able, you know, if what, what, what deals, what terms are you going to give me if I can't, can't pay this back? You know, we've been talking to, you know, we've got some credit lines that, that, that we have out there and we've maxed all of them out. Now we're going back and saying, Hey, we might not have any money because we've, you know, lost all our customers. What are we, you know, what are you going to do with this? And the banks are just like, yeah, we're figuring that out ourselves, but we're going to do something. Don't, don't worry about it. So we're kind of just trying to figure out, out of all of the bills that, 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 that we have to, to pay each month, we're uh, believing that there's going to be a lot of help out there for us to, uh, to, to weather this storm. And we're going to have to pay the bills eventually, but the banks aren't going to get anything if they, you know, don't give us an opportunity to get back running again. And the other thing that we need to, to, to be looking at is what help's going to be coming from small businesses. And there's legislation that's, I mean, there's a couple bills that, uh, you know, I'm assuming the most recent one maybe was signed into law today. And a lot of the more of that's on the, um, you know, things that we need to do for, for employees. And maybe we need to talk about that next week, but uh, not, not today. Um, but there's going to be more relief coming for, for, for small business as well. And uh, you know, the small business administration is going to be having loans to, to, to help. And I would be looking into that this weekend and, figuring out uh, what uh, what options you have and kind of start getting your, your your numbers together to be able to start having those discussions. Since we're not going to be cleaning a lot of homes next week, we're planning on spending some some time working on that. Um, so I, I, I can just say that I am applying for an um, um, SBA loan. Um, I just think that right now, any access that I can get to different monies is the smart move because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know where it's, we're going to be in six months, a year, et cetera. So I, I'm applying for, um, I know a lot of people were saying, Oh, is that good? I don't know. It doesn't seem like if you're a strong company or if you've been around a while that you would want to do that. But along the same lines as your, your credit line. Yeah, I want to, I, I am. I'm not saying you should, but I'm saying I am. Hey, uh, we got Royce uh, here. Hey, Royce, you've been on uh, a number of our calls. I, I appreciate your, your active participation. He's sharing that his mortgage company is giving a three-month forbearance, and that's just kind of a fancy term for a vacation. They're not going to ask you to pay for it for, for three months. Um, and what is else? Which means, oh, and in, in, in month yeah. four, you would owe four months of payments, but it could readjust at that time. So they would be looking for you to pay like all four months at in, 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 in one big payment. Uh, like a balloon payment. Yeah. So that's a really good term we want to be looking at. Forbearance, y'all. That is not the same thing as a deferral. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. But like you said, you get to that point, and if you said, "Hey, I don't have that, but I can give you something," I'm sure they would be glad to um, to to have. <laughs> Everything's negotiable at this point. If you've uh, ever been to to any of our workshops, especially when we're talking about uh, you know contracts and rates and quotes and you know everything's negotiable and. Uh, 
we're living in a world now where more so than ever, everything is negotiable and you're going to ask for something and they're going to offer you something and you don't, you know, my, my, my advice is push back, ask for something more because, you know, the other option is, well, you know, I can just close, you know, my doors and you get nothing. And at that point, you're in the driver's seat. I mean, it's truly, that's where things are now. We're, we are in the I, driver's seat. I don't know, though, Tom, when we're talking about mortgages. <laughs> I feel like you want to be a little bit more careful when you're talking about your mortgage. Well, I would, I would test it. I mean, there's a, there's a million things that happen before Absolutely. your home's being foreclosed and your furniture is being put out on the street. I, I, I just know that 2008 was kind of tough on a lot of people with their houses. Yeah. A lot, is, a lot of people lost their houses. This is going to be different. I mean, I'm not saying, I mean, at the end of the day, you're, you're, you're probably right. I mean, I, and I'm agreeing. It's totally different. I'm just saying when it comes to your mortgage, maybe, maybe think, think harder and, and make sure that you're going to be ready for what that is. And you're ready for that discussion. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, that's good advice. You know, just every, thing we're saying here is is, 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 is opinion and and know. we don't agree on everything either and if we don't agree and we're partners right it, th th what that what that means is don't don't just say oh well they're saying it Tom is saying this that must be right or Liz is saying this that must be right and just go with it no yeah. do your do your own due diligence as well and to be clear, the overarching objective is to pay back your creditors. But if you don't, you know, if you overextend yourself and spend every last dollar you have real quickly, then you're really doing a disservice to your creditors. If you're out of money at that point, and you're out of business. Your creditors don't want you to do that, but they're not going to know you're doing it unless you tell them that's what's going to happen. If you yeah. tell them we got two choices, if we, you know, work with me and I'll get you your money back, it might be a while. It might be a lot longer than what either one of us wanted, but they all understand why. It's not because yeah. you're a bad business operator. It's because of an act of God that was beyond anyone's control. Yeah. Or, and, you know, or the other alternative is I'll give you every dollar I have now and that's the last dollar you're going to get. And it's not nearly what I owe you. Oh, sorry, Tom. No, Go ahead. No, please. And also the the other piece of that is um, the government is stepping in to help. So the government is also understanding that this is outside of everyone's control. Nobody was expecting it. And even if we had expected something along these lines, nobody was expecting that it was going to be as big, as bad, as scary as it currently is and looking to last for as long as it is. So we have the government assistance as well. So I know it looks like I'm kind of flip-flopping here on what I'm saying, but I'm not. I'm just saying that when it comes to something like forbearance, where they're saying, yeah, we're not going to charge you for three months, but then on the fourth month, you're going to have to pay all four months. Don't just count on that with the idea of like, eh, no big deal, because in four months, I know we're still going to be dealing with it. Now kick it down another four months, and then I'll owe eight months, because as those numbers compound, they get harder and harder and you don't want to put yourself in a bad position with your mortgage, I would think. Right. So, you know, look for better terms, you know, negotiate, like Tom was saying, negotiate better terms than this four month forbearance if you can. And, so I'm not shifting positions, just clarifying. Sorry, and, Tom. Yeah, and, and, and I think when you're talking about your home, I mean, some assets are worth more to you than others. If you have, you know, a car note, a home note, you know, I don't know, maybe a credit line of credit, just throw a couple of other objects in there. You need to kind of prioritize. It's like, well, if I'm going to have to give one of these back to the bank, which one do I want to, you know, which, which, which one do I want to hold on to? <laughs> yeah, which one do I want the most? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I see that we have another question here, Tom. Do you feel or think that credit cards won't be a feasible feasible option for some? Uh, that's good. That's a good question. Um, you know, I know recently, I guess up until the last month or so, banks were really generous about giving away credit cards and making it real easy. And you just 
go online and answer, you know, two or three questions and bam, you know, you, you get a credit card. Um, they're probably going to be tightening up on that. Um, I can tell you from my experience in 2008, credit cards would reel in your line of credit with them. So if you had a credit card that, you know, you had like $30,000 line of credit on it, they would come back and say that, okay, we're going to cut that down to 10. And there's a couple of reasons for that. And, you know, back in 08, the banks were what they call undercapitalized and they need more money in, 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 in reserve. And it was, it was, it gets a little bit technical, but if you had a $30,000 credit line and you weren't really using it, then they had to, act like that whole $30,000 was, was, was out there when it really wasn't. So one of the ways they managed to start chopping those down, I don't know if we're going to get back into that situation or not. So um, this kind of gets back to the credit line. I'm not really big about taking a credit card. that has got some really, you know, obscene interest rate and borrowing money against it. At some point, the numbers don't work, but if you've got credit lines out there, like, you know, a second mortgage on your home, for instance, um, you know, Liz, Liz raises a point, you borrow that, you might be putting your home at risk, but then again, you know, you might find a situation that you can just turn right around and use that money to pay your mortgage down for a number of months. So there's a lot of, a lot of ways of, of, of looking at that. And typically most of those uh, notes are, are variable rate, which would be really, really uh, low at this point. Of course, there's a chance that interest rates could be going up in the months ahead too. There's, there's a couple of uh, schools of thought on that. And uh, a lot of unknowns because, again, unprecedented. Yeah. So a lot of unknowns. Uh, I, I, I do like the idea, though, of potentially um, borrowing against your mortgage, you know, taking out a, a second, maybe, especially if you know that your cash situation is um, maybe tenuous, then that might be a, a, a good idea. Uh, again, just going to have to play it by ear. I know that one thing about entrepreneurs is uh, many times we are, we, we tend to be um, more tolerant of risk. We're used to just being out there and like risking a lot to be able to build our businesses. So um, just a little bit of caution thrown out there, especially because we are entrepreneurs and we have a tendency to take on take on more risk than maybe is wise at times. I don't know who's who's gauging wise and who gets to define it, but maybe some to look at. Uh, there was something else I wanted to talk about, and I can't remember what it was. Oh, I know. Do you have any information, Tom, about the stimulus checks that are supposed to be going out in April and May? No, a lot of that I think is still being hashed out today, um, and I've been a little bit preoccupied with some other things, but I'm I'm planning on getting caught up on on all of that this weekend. Somebody hit me up earlier today and wanted to know if I knew uh, when the April sixth. Well, obviously when is April sixth, but um, how much that check was going to be, who's getting it, and how that whole thing was working. I was like, I I'm not exactly sure, but we might talk about it on the call. If anybody in this that's on this call right now has heard anything, yeah. uh, let us know. I'd, I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love to know what's. I keep saying call, but how about Facebook Live instead? What, what I what I did see yesterday, the, you know, the, the the bill had had like layers in it. It was means tested, and um, I think it was a, a dollar amount per adult and a smaller dollar amount per child. And I think once uh, I guess what would it be household income, maybe it was individual income. I don't know. I exceeded ninety nine thousand. Then there was nothing. So. Um, but it was, you know, designed to to help, uh, you know, the folks who really needed it the most, which is 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 really what was intended. It's a good thing, and um, you know, there's a there's a lot of stuff being being noodled around at the moment. But you know, uh, I'm not sure what's actually been passed into law yet. And even once it becomes law, there's a lot of the details then that need to be fleshed out in the regulations. We still not are, aren't going to be sure 
how it's going to be implemented until we get uh, get more data. Here's uh, Amanda says she spoke to her attorney. Nothing's been finalized. I'm waiting for it to be finalized and hoping by Monday to have answers. Well, right. that sounds about right. That's what we've been hearing. So, um, what else? What other kinds of questions do people have or other suggestions, other things that people are, have been doing um, to, to help with their, their financial situations right now? Anybody? Hmm. You know, several, several other things I guess we need to be thinking about in the context of this. You know, we need to be educating ourselves as to what assistance uh, is available in your state and your local market for any any of your employees that are displaced. Um, you know, we're using the term furlough, which means, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, we're, we're looking at this as a temporary thing. And once the virus threat, you know, reaches an appropriate level, we're going to go back to work. Um, you know, what documentation do you need to, to, to give to, to your employees so they can uh, qualify for unemployment and, those rules, I think, are, are are being changed as well to make it easier for people to do that. And um, what it what's uh, did, did, did well, Heather, okay. What's Heather other? Was, she was saying that um, she called her workers' comp, her general liability, and car payments, and she got help with all of those things. So um, that's good to know. I don't know that a lot of people would consider even thinking about workers' comp, right? Yeah. So, and she got she got help with workers' comp, so that's good to know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were, I mean, that's good. We were talking to our insurance agent today, and he said that something's coming, but they don't know what it is, and every company's kind of kind of doing it different. But it kind of falls in the same boat. You, you know. Everybody, everybody out there that we are currently writing a check for wants us to succeed, wants us, you know, continue to do business for a long time in the future and continue to write them checks. So, to whatever extent they can 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 work with us, they will. Um, Heather's mentioning landlord as well. Absolutely, um, you know, if you're 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 renting space and you can go back and everything's negotiable. You know, do you, do you cut that rent back? Do you, you know, maybe get, oh, yeah, there's, 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 there's options. Cause you know, on, if I'm a property manager, I own a building, I'm probably financing that building with a bank. So whoever owns that building, that space has to write a check to the bank every month and they need, you know, your money to do that. But banks won't loan them money on that building unless they've got contracts saying that there's a certain amount of income being produced on that because they have to typically refinance this commercial space on some regular basis, oftentimes like every five years. And if their numbers are, are bad and they don't have enough space rented, then refinancing becomes more more difficult. They have that big balloon payment they have to, to, to refinance. So um, under normal terms, uh, landlords are really reluctant to negotiate lower rents because it jacks up their 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 contract rates and puts them in a bad position with the bank. But I think all that's out the window right now. So um, thank you, Heather. Ask the question. Anybody you write a check to each month, ask the question. Another thing that we're doing, if you're not writing a check to them, if they're doing a automatic sweep out of your checking account, we're turning all that mess off. We don't want any money going out of our checking accounts unless we are physically writing a check for it. We want to be able to control that. So if we need that money for something else, then we, you know, the whole idea of negotiating better terms is compromised if they're able to just take what they want out of your bank account each month. So you, you need to turn all that off. we got quite a few questions here from Amanda. Let's see. I'm going to sort of read them real quick. 
She wants to know if there's a way to market to small businesses and other companies to disinfect. We talked a little bit about that yesterday. Um, might might be easier for you to go and look at the Facebook Live from yesterday, Amanda, on that one. Um, is the cleaning and disinfecting of businesses and homes covered by insurance? This would be a win-win for us and the companies and homeowners. Hmm, I, hadn't, I hadn't thought of that. I haven't even heard that question yet. Um, she also says we're starting to have the staff go in with Tyvek suits and use a 360 formula that has a killed claim. And then she also asks, what company do you go through? Ours won't. I'm guessing that she's talking about her um, general liability, maybe, on that? I don't know. Amanda, what are you talking about? What company do we go through that yours won't? And then she has also Tom asking the question about the cleaning and disinfecting being covered by insurance. What do you think about that? I have not even heard that question pop up. Have you? Um, it's a consideration. I guess it really depends upon, depends on a lot of things. You know, if you're being asked to go into a building, for instance, that had a known outbreak of the coronavirus, and this is happening. People were working are working in space and they get sick in the middle of the day and fever and start coughing up blood in some cases. Then you got to evacuate that building and then they're looking for people to clean that building. That's a special type of cleaning that requires some training and certification and some special insurance on, on, on your employees as well. So I don't know if that's what you're talking about or is this just general office space or some other space that, that people are just concerned and want to be extra safe. But when you get to the point where you're putting on Tyvek suits, that usually implies that you're dealing with something hazardous. Um, you know, we... You know, we have another business where we do do painting, for instance, and every once in a while we uh, are working in a building that was had painted prior to 1975, which means you have to assume it has lead-based paint. So if you're doing tear out and stuff like that, you have to get respirators and Tyvek suits and stuff like that. We got people trained for that, though. They take courses for that. And our insurance agent knows that we do that. Basically, if your insurance agent knows that you do that, they write you a policy that protects you against that. But... It's kind of like if you, you tell them that you're doing you're cleaning homes and you wind up uh, replacing roofs and somebody gets hurt, then that might be a problem because you never told them you were replacing roofs. So cleaning is, you know, there's a whole spectrum of that, I guess. So the simple answer to your question, I would call my insurance agent, explain clearly what you were doing and then let them tell you what type of insurance you need. Your insurance agent is your partner. I talk to my insurance agent probably a couple times a month. I want them to know everything that we're doing. Because every once in a while, it's like, wow, you're doing that. Well, have you considered blah, blah, blah? You realize if you you know this happens, then you know, you're gonna you need to you need to know some things that you don't know. It's like, okay, well, educate me. <laughs> Your insurance agent can, can can tell you a lot of things that 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 we might not know. I know mine tells me things I don't know that uh after hearing it, I'm sure glad I, I brought it up. I'm always really glad that you're my partner because I don't like to talk to my insurance company. So I like that you do. And then you tell me stuff I don't know. And that works out really well. Uh, Heather is um, giving a little bit more information. Her workers comp will be paid through the yearly audit. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, general liability will push the amount due back 30 days. So you're still paying. You're just paying it 30 days out. And then car payments are adding an additional month to the term date. And that must be what hers are doing. Not, and not everybody's is doing that. There are different terms, but that's what's happening for her. So that's yeah, all good info. Pushing the payment up. Yeah. yeah. For another another tip with the insurance. And again, you need to talk to your insurance agent and say, hey, listen, I'm, you know, I'm losing business and I need to... I need to conserve cash. One of the things you can do is recast your expected earnings, you know, your, your expected revenue, which will lower your, 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 your GL and recast your payroll, which will lower your workers comp. And they'll basically charge you each month for what you project those numbers to be. You can even, you know, you don't want to lowball it 
too much because at some point they're going to, you know, at the end of the year, they're going to do an audit and you'll have to make up the difference. But if you don't have the cash now, but think you will at the end of the, uh, the, 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 the policy term, you can even give them a maybe out of the spectrum of, of guesses you could give them, you could give them the lowest guess that you could rationalize just to save your, 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 your money up front. And you'll worry about the audit when they, when, when, when the audit comes. And yeah. when it comes and you owe them money, you don't have it. You can have the discussion then. Again, everything's negotiable. I, I feel like that happened to me one year where uh, my audit came in and I owed a ton of money for some reason. I don't even remember why. This, I would say this is at least 10, maybe 15 years ago. And I ended up paying it off over the course of maybe three, four months. So... Wow, that seemed to work out all okay for me, even though it was a big chunk of change. Was like, what? That's a huge mistake right there. Uh, let's see. Amanda says, "Thank you. My attorney recommended that we go into business and clean every businesses and clean every surface with a disinfectant, not to market it as a hazmat for me, but simply going in and disinfecting and explain our process. The reason I am using the Tyvek suits is to protect everyone. Thank you." Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you're saying you're disinfecting and if you're actually using a disinfectant and if you're using it the way the instructions tell you, you need to use it, not to be redundant. I've got a bottle of it around here somewhere, but, you know, it'll, most of them will tell you that you need to use some type of cleaner to remove the soil and then spray the disinfectant on the surface and then it needs to dwell for 10 minutes and sometimes you wipe it off and sometimes you don't but um you know i know a lot of times people don't clean you know don't use the disinfectant that way if you're spraying and wiping it still has efficacy you're killing germs but you're probably more sanitizing than you are truly disinfecting so that would be the only thing if your your marketing is disinfecting i would uh encourage your people to just train them to make sure they or do clean you first. Clean first, clean first. Now, we are training all of our our clients on this. So um, we created a little video telling them that because the CDC is recommending that they clean every single day. So we created a video telling them how, showing them how to do that. And then for anybody that doesn't have uh, microfiber and because we really recommend the two microfiber system anybody that doesn't have microfiber and disinfectant to to reach out we have a little kit that we're selling two microfibers and uh, uh, four ounces of disinfectant that will make I can't remember how many gallons eight gallons or something like that of disinfectant so um, that that's a way to just get that message out of what you're doing that's different too uh, what's Heather say over here? Make sure you do your number checking when your audits come back and they say you owe money. It can be auditor error. Don't just pay because they say you owe money. Challenge it. I'm just saying. She probably had a situation. I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, I just had this image in my mind of being the auditor for Heather's business and <laughs> how that whole dynamic and exercise would, would work. I bet that was fun. <laughs> Heather is Heather is very meticulous and is very uh, you know if if it was five you know dollar error that was not uh, you know that, that was not in her favor she would would would, would catch it and I'm sure she was uh, squeezing every bit of juice out of that because Marcus Compot it's a lot of times there's some 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 gray areas in terms of you know if you know how they work every position has a different what they call scopes code which implies you know what you pay per per hundred dollars of payroll so you know if i'm if i have a clerical job my pay my insurance is a lot less than if i'm, if I'm a cleaning technician and some people spend part of their time in the office and part of the time cleaning so now you're kind of negotiating as to you know what you know, what rates should be applied to to that person's payroll well, Heather, did you read what Heather said? Yeah. She's been at three grand and she only paid 800. You Four go, girl. Paid. I just saw Katie's question too. 
What are you selling that for, Liz? Forty. Well, um, is it just me or has this been a long week? <laughs> Not just you, Tom. <laughs> yes, just making the labels on Avery. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it has been a really long week. And uh, what you said earlier, Tom, is so true. Normally, Fridays are like, Gosh, I just want to get to like five o'clock where I can feel like not a slacker to be off work. But <laughs> now it's like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen over the weekend. Oh, please, please, please don't let anything bad happen over the weekend. Yeah, Amy, it's been a really long week. I know it's been a really long week for you. So you're really hanging in there. You, 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 you hang in there, Amy. Where's yeah. The, this is a temporary condition. And. I'm looking for people having a rough week. Yeah. Somewhere somewhere down the road, we're gonna have a really big party and we're gonna celebrate being out on the other end. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. I'll be in doing doing better. You know, I kinda I kinda look at this in a lot of ways as like uh like World War II. My my son's really into history and we've had some discussions and you know, I was telling him about, you know, there's a lot of people that are just kind of irrational fear. And he goes, yeah, he was kind of like uh, being in England when Germany first st started dropping bombs on him. And it's like, yeah, tell me about it. My son's name is Richard. And he was like explaining that, you know, initially everybody was kind of hunkered down in their basements and just everything just came to a standstill. And eventually it was like, well, crap, if this is going to keep happening. we got to figure out how to live with this. We can't live in our basements forever. And if you know the story, I mean, they did some amazing things in spite of the fact that they had bombs, you know, dropping on their head randomly. And um, one day that whole war was over. And if you've seen pictures, I mean, the celebrations of VE Day and all of that, I mean, that's going to be it's going to be us uh, one day here, hopefully uh, not too far in the future. But uh, at the moment, we got some bombs coming in. So we're just going to have to, you know, figure out how we, we crawl out from uh, from our bomb shelters and, and function in spite of that. And, uh, and, we and we're in a harder position right now because it's only probably been in this past week that we've realized, oh, you mean these are bombs? <laughs> oh, <laughs> we need to bunker down, right? So, uh, or hunker down, bunker down, whatever. I've heard both of those terms being thrown out this last week. So, you know, we're kind of early stages here, expecting people to just be like, ah, business as usual now with the bombs coming in. It's a little bit early for that, but looking forward to it. Definitely looking forward to that coming. Uh, let's see, we're going to be too busy cleaning to party, Heather says. <laughs> uh, Janet, good. I'm glad that the daily lives have been helpful. Um, now, not, not a whole lot we can do, uh, but part of what we have always wanted to do um, is help the industry and help professionalize the industry. It's been our, that's been what we've been saying since we started doing this gig together, uh, Tom, Derek, and I, and I think every single time we get together, we have this conversation about professionalizing the industry and kind of making sure that, trying to get everybody all on the same page and, um, Trying to get us all working to again make the you know build up the, the entire industry. So this is just one more version of that and one more opportunity for our entire industry to be bigger, better, more than it has ever been in the past and to be seen in a bigger, better, more way than it ever has been in the past. So we're we're kind of happy to do this. I kind of jumped on Tom's thing here this is tom's thing and i was like i'm just gonna show up every week or every day <laughs> and horn in on this well to be, to be, to be honest liz talked convinced me that, that that this needed to be done and the whole part of the discussion is that we've invested yeah. the last 20 some odd years 
trying to make this industry a better place for the benefit of all stakeholders. You know, the, the, you know, the, the clients that we serve and the hardworking people that go out there and actually, uh, you know, do the, do the hard work every day and the business owners who, um, put in the blood, sweat and tears. And you guys know what that's about. And we were going to be going through some very disruptive times and everything was going to kind of be up in the air. And, um, you know, we need to try to help each other through all of that. So that's really kind of kind of the point of this. And you know, in some small way, we're, 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 we 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 hope that, that that this is useful. And when the pieces start coming back down, we want to do everything we can to help people put them together in a way to make this industry stronger than what it ever has been. Because the opportunity is going to be there. There's uh, the way the consumer looks at, at at cleaning is never going to change again. This is like 9/11, and the way people think about getting on an airplane is different now than than, than what it was before 9/11. And um, the whole competitive forces is going to be different. You're going to look to your left and look to your right, and where you used to have competitors, they're not going to be there anymore. And um, I mean, you know, I'm not wishing bad on anybody. The reality is not everybody is going to be in the cleaning business six months from now that was in it last month. So, you know, for those of us who, who are here and trying to do it in the right way, we want to do everything we can. And that's kind of where we're sharing the stuff that we're sharing because we make the uh, smart business moves. Now we'll be there several months from now when, 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 when the bombs, you know, we, we learn how to function, either the bombs start falling or we learn how to function with, with, with the bombs falling. And, um, Getting back to the whole heart of this discussion is, is about the whole financial side. You're going to need money to get your business jump started again. If you find yourself having to shut down, and I think that we're seeing as time goes on, it's un, it's realistic to expect that more and more communities and states are going to say, "You guys just need to stay home for a while, lock up, and let this uh, let this virus pass." You're you're in some regards, it's going to look like a startup, and you're going to need working capital. Hopefully the SBA will be there to help with some of that. But as much money as you can hold on to now, that's going to put you in a better position to get your business started when, when that opportunity creates itself. Am I repeating myself, Liz? Mm, not in a bad way, Tom. Okay. So, I mean, it's some messages we, we need to be hammering on and hitting, right? They're, they're more important than others. So. We just got a message here in Washington, no stay at home order. Here in Washington. No stay at home order? Sweet. No stay at home order. Yeah. I don't know. Is it? Is it sweet? I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I, I'm saying that at the same time, I'm kind of wincing because, you know, yeah. it's paying me now. You know, let's, yeah. you know, it's hard. It would well, be, it, the answer. I'm sorry, Tom. <laughs> and, wait. Liz, you know what I would normally be doing on a Friday afternoon, right? I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, be yeah so this this is your new kind of fishing, Tom. Yeah, it is. Right? It yeah. is. But uh, thanks, Amy. You rock as well. Stick it out there, girl. Yeah, New York, all non-essential businesses have to stop effective today. Yeah. Well, right. you think, uh, you know, we, we, we'll, I think we should probably just uh, keep our ear to the ground over, over the weekend. I know that people have different thoughts about that. I hear some people say they have to turn the news off to keep their sanity, and I, I get that. And if that's uh, what gets you to Monday, certainly do it. Um, I have this affliction that I just need to know, so I'll probably spend too much time on this, but that's okay. We'll we'll get together Monday and uh, we'll, we'll we'll pick it up from there. Uh, five o'clock Eastern time. Five o'clock Eastern. Okay. Kathy, uh, you're asking the the fifty five million dollar question. You like that number there? Mm -hmm. There, we, we don't have a definition yet of what is an essential business. It's essential business is defined differently in different areas and just completely undefined in many areas. So, yeah, kind of 
we don't we don't have a good answer for you there yeah unfortunately and which kind of gets into it begs the question how do you even force that anyway and you know we don't know and we're trying really hard to answer that question the people are enforcing it what are they going to know i mean you know every kind day depends though. on what you're doing what yeah. are you doing what do you think you're doing what does the law say what's written down you know what what could you reasonably ex be expected to know and believe yep yep heather money at five I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I'm supposed to do and show you guys cleaning business today. I was testing Liz to see if she was going to remind me. I was gonna remind you that you're supposed to tell everybody what we're gonna talk about on Monday. Oh, okay. I can do that. What's going on here? Here we go. You know, on my side, I can't make comments, Tom. You can't make comments? Really? Mm -mm. No. Nope. Okay. Not while we're in the live. Well, this is um, this is Cleaning Business Today and cleanbusinessday.com. Um, we're going to be, this is like an article that we put out the other week on the coronavirus got some good stuff in here how how the virus is spread uh, you don't want to see that um, how the virus is spread and some of the, the the terminology that could be useful to you and and explain to your clients how you're actually helping to reduce the chance of them contracting a uh, pathogen like uh, coronavirus a lot of the uh, materials that we've been putting out here is on a link which is coronavirus-downloads.com. And I'm going to copy that since I can do a comment. And I'm going to put that thing right there. Oh, and looks like Shara came in right as we're getting ready to leave. I don't know if that's how you pronounce your name, Shara, but that is my daughter's name as well. And that's how we pronounce it. So, um, Sorry, go back and read through stuff, and I probably have to watch that live because we are getting ready to head out for the weekend as soon as Tom tells us what we'll be talking about on Monday. I had that all figured out. You yeah. did. Right. You did. It's good. It's going to be something good. And all this is kind of subject to change, too, depending upon what happens between <laughs> Oh, and Monday. We were going to talk about public relations opportunities. Oh, yeah. we, and, you know, the, the press is starving for information on the coronavirus and how to, you know, make, protect people and just anything about the coronavirus. You can't turn, you know, the news on the TV on, you know, go to the internet, whatever. It's all about coronavirus. And they need content. So this is an opportunity just for cleaning business owners to be subject matter experts, to be interviewed, to uh, get backlinks for our website, to get more local uh, recognition and PR for your businesses. So we're going to talk about some of those opportunities and, and, and techniques on Monday. And also, go ahead, Tom. Uh, and also, you know, a, a recap of some of the things that we learned over the weekend. Then last thing, if you're working on your PR stuff, go to the Clean Business Today page that Tom just showed you, pull up that article, make sure that you do know the, the correct terms and you understand how everything works and you can you can share a really great message there. All okay, right. guys. Well, right here. we've uh, been here for almost an hour. Hope, uh, hope this is, is useful. Get some rest this weekend. Um, you know, this is, uh, this is going to be a long race. So, um, we will, we'll be at this a while. Um, be safe. You guys, uh, we'll, we'll see you Monday at five. Bye-bye.